All right, here's a little background information on the Articles of Confederation and the United States Constitution. So, uh, two frameworks of government that um, this country has used in the past and is cur currently using. So, the background about it, uh, the first off, the Articles of Confederation uh, were adopted, approved November 15, 1777, after uh, independence, declaring independence uh, from England. Uh, ratification was needed by all 13 states first in order to go in uh, into effect, which was hard to do. Uh, so eventually it did go into effect uh, four years later, 1781. And what we call is more of a league of friendship. Now, some of the features behind the Confederation, Congress was the sole organ, assuming there's only one branch, it was Congress. Uh, they can make war and peace. Uh, they could send ambassadors to other countries. They could send people to uh, discuss things with other countries. They could enter in treaties with other countries. They could borrow money. They could set up their own system if they would like, and they could build a navy. Uh, they also raised army by asking states. So they had to ask each individual state for soldiers or troops uh, in order to protect the country. Uh, they could do things like make their standard weight and measures, and then they could settle disputes between states. So if there were two states were arguing, there was a dispute there. They could help settle that dispute. Uh, one of the weak, some of the weaknesses though. Uh, a lot of weaknesses. One vote for each state. So large states, small states, they all had one vote when it came to the table to change things or fix things or vote on different laws and regulations. Uh, they couldn't lay or collect taxes or duties, so uh, they couldn't create their own uh, tax structure to collect money for the government. States uh, could probably do that, but they could not do that as a, a federal government. Uh, they couldn't regulate foreign and interstate commerce. So things coming in and out of the country, they couldn't regulate what was what was going on there. They couldn't make money off of it. Uh, there was no executive to enforce the acts of Congress, or Congress was making laws, but they didn't really have anyone to enforce these things. And they had no national court system that was left up to the states. Uh, amend the, the Articles of Confederation to amend or to change. The only way to do that was to get consent from all 13 of the states. Uh, in order to pass a law, nine of them had to agree. And again, it was kind of looked at as a league uh, of friendship. So why create the Constitution then? So uh, 55 delegates come from all these states except Rhode Island, uh, and they become known as the framers. They create or frame the new Constitution. Uh, and they actually named George Washington as the president of the convention, uh, who was later then named president of the United States. It was in Philadelphia in 1787. Um, why they were doing this, each state received one vote. Um, everything was majority uh, on these votes. And they were kind of trying to be secret about this. Uh, they didn't want people to know that they didn't trust the government, they wanted to change it. So there's a lot of problems. And how did it fix these problems? So what was the remedy behind them? Um, the biggest thing was representation. Big states, large states, uh, how could they each get what they wanted out of these things. So there's a lot of solutions. They had the Virginia plan and the New Jersey plan, and the solutions that they came up with were a bunch of compromises. So the Virginia plan, uh, first off, uh, was based off of the large states. So when they came to the convention, uh, they, they looked at changing the Articles of the Confederation, and some people got there earlier than others, and they started talking and realized they need a new government structure. So that's how the Constitution was created. And when the first plan that was kind of uh, offered was the Virginia plan. And this is because the large states were talking. The Virginia plan allowed for a legislative branch that was bicameral. Bicameral means two houses. So they created the House of Representatives and the Senate. The House of Representatives would be based on population. That's what the large states wanted. Amount of money the state gave in support of the government was also a way to kind of regulate this. And then the Senate would also be based on population, um, and they were able to then make laws. And they also created a uh, executive branch and a judicial branch. The New Jersey plan was a little bit different. It favored the smaller states. They only wanted a one house or unicameral Congress. Everyone had the same amount of representatives. They added certain powers, like power to tax, which was important. And they also wanted to be able to regulate trade coming in and out of their country. In their executive branch, which they included, they wanted more than one person so they wouldn't be a tyrant or someone that would take over and control the power. 
and then judicial branch would be a single tribunal body. So after disagreements, uh, they came up with these compromises. They wanted to get this thing passed. In order to please both, they came up with the Connecticut Compromise. This idea was that in the Senate, representation would be equal. So now we have two senators per state. And representation in the House of Representatives would be based on population. They also had this idea, uh, they were talking about north and south. They were looking at uh, geographic and they came with a three-fifths compromise. It was a question about counting slaves. So a lot of slaves live in the south. They want the southerners want to add that towards their population so that they'd have more representatives in the House of Reps. So the, in order to resolve this, all free men uh, will be counted as one and three-fifths of all other persons. So a slave counts as three-fifths of a person towards the population. They have the commerce and slave trade uh, compromise. I uh, also agree that Congress would regulate foreign and interstate trade. So the South feared that their agriculture system would go downhill, uh, that Congress wouldn't care about their agricultural interests, and that they would interfere with the slave trade. So Congress, uh, with the slave and commerce trade co uh, compromise, Congress could not tax exports of goods from any state. So things coming out of the state, they couldn't tax. Also, they wouldn't even talk or discuss the slave trade for another 20 years. So after all this work, the Constitution was then completed on September 17th, 1787. In order to ratify this, though, it took a while. Nine of the states needed to approve the Constitution. Uh, New York and Virginia, big states, were kind of unsure about this new Constitution if it, um, they didn't have enough power. So two sides were kind of created. The Federalists, they wanted ratification, they wanted to get it done. The Anti-Federalists, they opposed this ratification. They did not want this to pass the way it was. And there's two issues. The central government became very powerful. Under the Articles of Confederation, it lacked a lot of power. However, they feel some, some people felt that the central government, the federal government, became very powerful. And also, it didn't have a bill of rights, so people thought maybe their individual rights would be attacked. So again, the Federalists, they wanted to adopt it, adopt it. They believed that the Constitution had implied powers, um, things that you can kind of interpret going forward, and they wanted a strong federal government. The Anti-Federalists, however, were against it, led by Thomas Jefferson. They were angry over the fact that states uh, cannot print money. They were limited. Uh, they believed in limited powers of the federal government. They thought whatever is written down, that should be it. They wanted more of the power to reside in the states. So that was kind of the makeup of ratification and how the government structure came up. So here's exactly kind of the structure of the Constitution itself. And uh, they have an introductory paragraph. So the preamble uh, is the beginning to kind of introduce what is going on, what is happening, what is this government structure like. Then you have our articles, the main section of the Constitution. Uh, sets of all the different branches and different government issues. And then the, any additions are called amendments. So anything that's written down are additions to the Constitution are amendments. And in the Constitution, you have some basic principles that are followed. So basic understandings of things that government should do. So these basic principles are popular sovereignty. The government power comes from the people. The people uh, run for government positions. People vote for them and the people make the decisions. Also this idea of the limited government, that the government cannot be too powerful. Uh, they have to follow the Constitution, there's a rule of law there, not above the law, and it can only do what the people really allow it to do. One of the biggest principles here is separation of powers as well. Each branch has certain powers, they have to follow those powers, uh, and that's the only powers they can do. So legislative branch has the power to uh, make laws. The executive branch cannot do that. Then there's this idea of checks and balances. So making sure each branch doesn't become too powerful. They look over these branches, make sure they're doing their job, interpret what they're doing uh, so that no one branch becomes too powerful. Uh, judicial review uh, is the judicial branch declaring things that are unconstitutional, whether it's the president acting on something, Congress making a law. 
they can declare something unconstitutional. It violates the Constitution. And this idea of federalism. The government powers are divided among national and state levels. So this gives the power to the states as well. Uh, some of those anti-federalists who wanted more power in the state level, uh, they get this through, through the idea of federalism where governments uh, have different powers. And the federal government has powers, state governments have powers, and sometimes they share power. So if you look at the makeup of the Articles of the Constitution, it goes to the first three uh, branches, legislative, executive, judicial. Uh, Article 4 talks about the, the relationships between states. Article 5, how to amend the Constitution and the ratification of an amendment. Article 6 declares the Constitution supremacy, so declaring that the Constitution is the supreme law of the land. And the last one is the ratification process, which we no longer need because it was ratified. So changing the Constitution, so formal amendments, actually things that are actually written down in the Constitution, um, has now been enforced for some over 200 years, uh, longer than any other written Constitution of any nation. So it's been around the longest. And you can formally amend it or informally amend it. And the first 10 amendments, which were wa wanted by the Anti-Federalists, were added, are known as the Bill of Rights. So if you look at the Bill of Rights here, you have the First Amendment, freedom of religion, speech, press. Uh, the right to bear arms is the Second Amendment. The recording of troops, which we don't really have to worry about, is the Third Amendment. Uh, Fourth Amendment, searches and seizures, so you can't have an unreasonable search and seizure against you. Fifth is double jeopardy, being charged for the same crime. Um, you don't have to speak at your own trial, a fair trial. Sixth is different rights that you get in a criminal trial. Seventh Amendment is different rights you get in a civil trial. Uh, Eighth Amendment, excessive bail and fines or uh, cruel and unusual punishment. The Ninth, unenumerated rights, rights that cannot be taken away, so your individual liberties and rights. And then the Tenth Amendment, uh, all other rights are reserved for the states. And then just looking at the other amendments, you know, the Civil War amendments, different things that Congress can do, voting, uh, elections of senators. And overall, we have 27 amendments. So that's a little kind of the background of the Articles of Federation and its failures, the League of Friendship there, why they decided to meet to create the Constitution, uh, the eventual ratification creation of the Constitution, and then kind of the, uh, the structure of it.